So I got a, we got a kind of a, a tough subject tonight, but sometimes we, we need it tough. Uh, because if you really want to do it right, you got to get it right. And you can't do better until you know better. And I believe the Holy Spirit's going to be with us tonight. And we're going to get somewhere. We're going to hear some tough stuff. I just want to tell you on the front end, I ain't mad at nobody. Say, we love you, Brother Bobby. Love you, Brother Bobby. All right. So, even though it might get a little heavy in here, just know that I ain't mad. <laughs> I'm not mad at anybody. I just, it just might just come out sternly from time to time. Amen. So, we're going to talk about something tonight called commitment. Oh, did I lose the three-fourths of y'all already? Did... <laughs> Amen. So you, you, can't, you can't rightly complain about your situation if you're not willing to do something about it. Let's just go ahead and throw a right hook right out of the gate. Okay. Quit complaining. If you're not doing something about your situation... You don't need to be complaining about it. That's right. Speak, Holy Ghost. Because nothing will change in your life until you do. Hey, hey. And nothing is going to start working in your life until you do. Amen. And if you've always done, if you, if you always do what you always done, you will be where you always been. And for some of us, it's just that level of commitment. Sometimes you ain't got enough skin in the game. And it's your own life. You're expecting to make with, uh, withdrawals and you've, you've never made any investments in your life. And some of you, I don't know, it's because, you know, just, we all come from different backgrounds. Some of us, we didn't get what we needed. And we should have gotten it. But we didn't get it. And so some, some don't know. And that's why I come along. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God's going to let you know something. You open for it. He'll let you know. But a lot of us are not where we want to be because for the very fact that we never stayed in it long enough to ever see it through fruition, to ever see anything positive out of it. Never stuck with it. Always giving up. Always quitting. If it's too hard, you stop. If you start, if you start sweating, you want to you, you want to wipe your forehead and sit down. And you've never pressed through and have accepted a, a, a culture within yourself to just drop it when it gets heavy. But I'm here to tell you that no matter what it is, the further up you go, listen, the heavier it will get. If you can't handle the light, you ain't going to be able to handle the heavy. And God said he will send your rain when you can handle your harvest. And so you got to do something. you got to put your hand to the plow and you can't look back and you got to keep going. You got to go forward. You got to go to that prize, the high calling in Christ Jesus. You got to press on. You got to press through. You got to press to something. You have to make up in your mind that you're going to go there and you're going to do it and you're not going to quit and you're not going to fall to the wayside and you're not going to listen to those that are in the ditch telling you every reason in the world why you can't do it. And the only reason they're saying that because they gave up and they can't do it and they don't want you to go on with their self. Because if you go on and do it, then they'll realize that they don't have no excuse anymore. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real. They want you to fail because they failed. And they had to deal with their failure if you succeed on something. My Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, you have to face something if you want to change it. A lot of y'all, and look, Bible talks about prayer, and I'm a praying man, and hallelujah for prayer. We did some praying up here tonight. Bible speaks on prayer. But some things you don't need to just go in your prayer closet. Come on, help me out, somebody. And just talk to God about it. When He gives you a word, you need to go confront it. You need to look at it eyeball to eyeball and say, I ain't afraid of you no more. I ain't afraid of you. I ain't moving. We're going to get this on. 
I might be kicking and screaming and scratching and clawing and swinging my arms like a windmill. You know that kid that got tired of it? Third or fourth grade, got tired of being beat up on? Finally decided, he, bless his heart, he couldn't fight worth nothing, but he come out swinging the best he could. <laughs> and you know what? They didn't mess with him no more after that either. He might get hit by a flying right hook from out of nowhere. He didn't see it coming. And he wasn't on target, but he hit something. And so it's going to take commitment. Amen. You're going to have to use commitment, and it starts in your heart. And it's tested by action. Why? Because there's nothing easier than saying words, y'all. Come on, I ain't going to get all political, but I am going to say this. There's a lot of people saying a lot of stuff. It's amazing if you could go back 20 years and hear these same kinds of people saying the same kinds of things that nothing ever goes on. It's easy to say stuff, y'all. Matter of fact, uh, have you believed your own lie? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Have you talked, I ain't going to do it no more, I ain't going to do it. That bottle is not for me. Hey, I've been there too, y'all. I remember hugging the porcelain God. And some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm never going to do this again. Oh, God, get me through the night. Never again. No, 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 huh? Oh, Jesus, no. Oh, what was I thinking? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, I feel like I want to die. Don't let me die, God. Don't let me die. Don't let me die. Hey. He had a call on my life. There's been many of a time I woke up and I had a black tongue because I had so much alcohol. I had poison and my buddies didn't know what to do with me. I was out of my mind and woke up where we used to pra practice music in our, what we call our practice pad, like old nasty couch. And there I was, wake up in the morning, not knowing where I was, what was going on, went into a mirror, looked like a mess. My skin was all yellow looking, my tongue all black and everything. I should have died, y'all. But God's got a call on your life just like he does on mine. And there ain't no difference between you and me except maybe you decided to quit. Come on. See, I ain't going to quit. I'm going to stay in the fight because I heard something. You see, faith comes by hearing. You can sit and quote something all you want to. And I'm not talking about hearing like you're going to hear me tonight. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost comes in, speaks the rhema word inside of you, and he lights something up like Christmas, like the 4th of July on the side of you. You know that you know that you know he said something. You can stand on that. Because Peter really didn't walk on the water. Peter walked on that word. Come on now. When he got that word, when he said, come, that's all he needed. How many of you could walk on those storms in your life if you would just give time to hear the Holy Ghost tell you to come? And then have enough courage and guts. Because I'm, I think I'm speaking to a crowd that's not a manly, pamby, kind of wishy-washy, Mickey Mousey kind of crowd. I have a feeling there have been a lot of people, been in a lot of scraps around here. You know how to have a good fight and to get in a good fight. Well, I'm telling you right now, when you get that word, you step out of that boat and you walk on the storms of your life when he tells you to come. Don't you stop. Don't you quit. And don't you hey, give up. Hey, 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 hey. Glory be to God. And he will meet you. And he will meet you right there when he says to come. But it's got to take commitment. It's, it's easy to say words, but there's nothing harder to live them out. Yeah. I can sit up here and, and, you know, it's one thing even about leadership. Like I've been talking to the leaders in the Dove program. Uh, in order to, to, have it, to be a leader, you've got to have some credibility. Be one thing me to get up here and be like, oh, Brother Bobby, so annoyed. That Pastor Bobby, I'm telling you what, he read a word, he gave a word, he gave a word. And then you see me at Winn-Dixie and they don't have the cut of meat that I want. And I go ahead and let the butcher have a piece of my mind about it. With a few choice words too, huh? Uh huh. All of a sudden, it's like it's confusing because why, why did I hear something so good, but I, I, I saw something so bad? Because it's easy to say it. I had to keep myself in check the other day. Lord Jesus, I did. I'm telling you, I did. But I did good. Matter of fact, look, I, I ain't gonna tell you all the details because it ain't none of your business. But what happened was, is I had a, had a, a, a trying time where I had to get something done with my car and it was not that my car was totally messed up i'll just say we were on tight schedule we had to get on the road we were going to, to our home church in greenville uh south carolina to be under that anointing uh 
for a Sunday. And I, ha- I, had a, I had a very close, I mean, my window of schedule through the day was tight, y'all. And I walked into a place where they was just, you know, we got your appointment. When I walked in, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, that is all confusing around here. Everybody running around with a chicken with their head cut off. I said, I know it's going to come. I said, Lord, they're going to say it, ain't they? They're going to say it. Well, Mr. Atwood, we haven't got your vehicle yet, but they just now put it on the rack. So I have to call somebody to pick me up and take me to another vehicle and from that vehicle uh, to come preach and then from there go back to the place. They were supposed to have a shuttle to pick me up. Didn't pick me up when they were supposed to pick me up. Called. Uh, They're not there? No. (laughs) Well, uh, they left a few minutes ago. I I think you were on the list. (laughs) I got stranded, y'all. But look, here's the point. There's more details of that, too. But here's the deal. The guy that was in charge of everything called me up later after everything was done, settled, and I got out of there, and I was like, Lord Jesus, thank you. I don't want to come back here again for a while. Thank you for freedom. Amen. Hey, I got, you know, I'm just like you guys, too. Amen. I know my wife might glow at night, but I'm working on it. So... Listen, guys, he called me back up later. And he has said, sir, I just, I just felt the need to call you to tell you thank you. He says, thank you for your, your good attitude and being patient and, and even helping. Yeah, because, see, somebody's car stalled out. And I even got out from the, where I was into the rain and helped push a car out of the road. Yeah, I did all. Okay. So, and he said, I just want to thank you for all your help. And I want to thank you for your good attitude and your patience. And because of that, not because of words, but because of actions, I was able to speak back to him and said, well, sir, I just want to present my Lord Jesus to you. I hope I didn't fail to represent. And he says, yeah, he says, there's something different about you when you come in here. He says, I'm glad you come in. See, it's easy to say a thing. But it's hard to walk it out. And so commitment will open the door to opportunities. Wouldn't it be a shame you get up to heaven and found out if you had only stayed with it for two more weeks what was coming around the corner? You were heading down 5th Street and your blessing was right behind 6th Street. But you ran out of gas and said, well, I ain't going to walk. And it was right there. Come on. Commitment. Commitment. You got to commit to the things that you're being taught here. You got to commit yourself to this word. This word will never fail. Jesus, it says, it says that love will never fail. And it says that Jesus is love. And it says that Jesus is the word. And this word will never fail. Even we may fail, our heart may fail, but he will never fail. Because faithful is he who called you who also will do it. He's a faithful God. But this commitment that you have to do on your part is he... There's there's only just so much stuff that he's going to set things up for you. He's going to allow things to happen. He's going to have things for you, but you've got to go towards them. And you've got to be obedient. You see, if... Sometimes we get confused, and, and I know I might ruffle some feathers, and I'm sorry. It's not like it's not happened before. And even some of the camps that I run in, some, so this might, be, not, might not be the popular message. They want to pull me over and say, well, now, Brother Bobby. But I'm going to tell you, okay, I got the mic tonight. <laughs> and that we've gotten a good dose of some lopsided grace. I said lopsided grace teaching, which puts no responsibility on you. But I'm here to tell you when I read my Bible... I don't know what she read, but when I read my Bible, we got a part to play in this, y'all. Amen. Even though he's provided everything by grace. I spoke on this last night. Everything God's done, he's already provided it by grace. That's grace. He's done it. He's provided it. He did his part. Thank God that you find out about that amazing grace because we are saved by grace 
that not of ourselves. So I am no means minimizing grace. But let me tell you something. Here's a new, here's a new wrinkle in your brain. Grace is totally on his part. Which means that there's nothing that can be added to it and there's nothing that can be taken away with it. So why are you going to absolutely spend all your time on something that can't be improved on and that can never fail? You see, you need to start thinking about your faith because everything that he has provided by grace, you access by faith. It's already, the table is already spread. You just have to learn how to go and get it freely. But faith takes some effort on our part. He's done the work. He says it's finished, it's finished. He says all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He says he will withhold no good thing from his children. It's not, and listen, religion will make you a beggar. Religion will make you bombard heaven for something that God's like, Michael, I know I put that in there that that was theirs. Why do they keep asking me for that? Why don't they just go get it? Because you see, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. You better go get what's yours. How dare you lay around and not press through and not be committed and something's got your name and your title deed on it, but you won't do nothing with it and somebody else comes along, fills your spot, fills your place and takes your stuff. Amen. Not mine. If you don't, you don't want yours, I'll take yours. Amen. I got a vision and stuff that I want to do in this city going to take something. I need all the help I can, resources I can get. You don't want to use it? You want to leave it in the shed? That's fine. Give it to me. I'll take it. Amen. We'll put it to work. Amen. Hallelujah. That's tight, but that's right. So when it comes to commitment, there are really only four types of people. You got the cop-outs. And your cop-outs are people who have no goals and they do not commit. Cop-outs. But what are you going to do? I don't know. What you thinking about doing? Man, I don't know either. What you reading? I ain't reading nothing. What direction you going? Man, I don't know. It's whatever the way the wind blows, bro. (laughs) Then you got, number two, you got your holdouts. You got the people who don't know if they can reach their goals, so they're afraid to commit. Let me just say this. If you're a child of the Most High God, greater is He that's in you than He is in the world. Amen. As Christ is, so are you in this world, it says. He says, He who is joined to Christ is one spirit. It says that he who has anointed us is God. We're already anointed. And it says that we have an anointing or an unction from a holy one and we know all things. That's why sometimes I don't participate in certain things. Well, Brother Bobby, I know you're going to bring a word tonight. Let's pray and pray over you and anoint you. It's like, that's all right, I'm good. And some people could take, a, 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 they could take offense if they're in a certain culture that don't know that you already anointed. And God's already called you to that. And if he's not called you to that, why are you there to begin with? Amen. You better know that you got some oil on your head before you step through them doors to deliver what God's told you to deliver. If you ain't, there ain't no bottle, basket, jar, or anything else. You can rub all the hair off your head if they want to. Pray for 30 minutes. And you still ain't going to be, because the anointing comes with ascending. Oh, Jesus. You know he sent you there for a certain thing. I don't preach, because if you don't watch it, you'll get in this, you'll take bits and pieces of different things that the scripture says, and then you'll form your own little religion about it. And you think, I've got to do this before it'll work. No, 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 and no. The Holy Ghost is always on. It's us that turn on and off. And if he sent you to do something in your life, if he's called you to do something, you are more than a conqueror in Christ. You've got everything you need inside of you, so don't hold out. Yeah, but I'm I'm an oak tree. 
Well, that's what he said anyways, but, but look at me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just an acorn. But God called you an oak tree because that's what you are as an oak tree. And if you'll get your mind off of that acorn and finally commit yourself and plant yourself into something and commit to it, over time that acorn will be an oak tree. You won't falter. You'll be shade for somebody. Glory be to God. Be long on the earth. A strong and mighty oak. But all you can see is an acorn. <clears throat> and you won't let that seed which God keeps planting in you to stay in you. You have these issues in your life that you won't deal with. And so you hold out and you think it's harder than it is. And so what happens is God is trying His best to grow you up into an oak tree. But every time He keeps throwing acorns, you get rid of them. Let me just say it this way. It takes the seed to, per, to, to produce uh, the baby. And God wants to birth some things in your life. And God has time and time again been intimate with you. And God has placed His seed inside of you in intimacy. But what happens is a lot of us start aborting it. And He's still faithful to keep planting that seed. And planting that seed. And we keep aborting it. Well, I don't like morning sickness. Well, you keep aborting it. Well, I don't, I don't like these changes that my body's going through. Yeah, you got to change. He doesn't want to leave you the way you are. He wants you to change. He wants you to be committed to that seed which is put inside of you. And He wants to, you to carry it to fruition because I'm here to tell you, glory be to God if you will just hold on to that seed and you won't abort that seed before too long. It might not have, you might not have a baby on the outside left, but I guarantee you this. If you will just nurture that seed that he's put on the side of you, you'll start to show. Yeah. You're going to start to show. And the whole world will know there's a God in Israel. Yeah. And there's a God in your life. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. That he's with you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I thought they were just playing around. I thought sister so-and-so, they were just janking on me. But you know what? They show it. They show it. It can't be hid anymore. It can't be hid anymore. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Number three, you got the dropouts. People who start toward a goal but quit when the going gets tough. So you got the cop-outs, you got the hold-outs, and now you got the drop-outs. That's too hard. Well, glory to God, it's only hard. It's not impossible. And when we quit equating hard with impossible, because you see, it all happens to, has to do with your perspective. I taught this in the Dove class. You're perceiving a thing because your perception of a thing is off. I can see this room one way. But when I change, I can see it in a whole other light. And I go over here, I can see it in a whole different light. In other words, I perceive something different when my perception changes. And if you won't drop out, and if you just have some commitment, there's no telling what you may see down the road. If you'll just take some introspection, let the Lord look into your life. He said, uh, the psalmist said, search me, O God. Yes. See. There's no telling what kind of treasures you'll find in there if you just keep going on with the Lord. But we got dropouts. But then number four, we got all out. And I'm hoping there'll be a big group of all-outs. I can't say everybody is, but I hope that there's a big group of all-outs. Because all-outs are people who set goals, they commit to them, and they pay the price to reach them. Did you know that there is a price to pay? Yes, once again, if you listen to a lopsided grace message, you think that, well, if it ain't a red carpet, it ain't God. Tell that to Jesus. Yeah. If he had to go through some stuff, who in the world do you think you are? You ain't got to go through some stuff. 
Now, there's a difference between uh, what he did for our salvation. Look, the man of Jesus got us ready for heaven. That's in a category all in itself. You can push that one to the side, okay? That's in a category all to itself. The person of Jesus got you ready for heaven, but the words of Jesus are going to get you ready for life. So he took care of the sweet by and by, but he has given you a way of overcoming the rotten here and now. Hallelujah. That's good preaching, Brother Bobby. And so there's a price to pay. It says, pick up your cross daily. Follow me. He says, I ain't promising they ain't going to want to throw stone. Ask Paul how it worked out. Man, I'd like to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Man, I tell you what, I'd like to raise the dead. Okay. Well, you know, it's mutually inclusive that that also comes with imprisonments, stonings, beatings. Hello, did I lose anybody? You want it? You really want it? Do you really want it? Because even the Lord said, he says, I must show him what things he must suffer for my sake. You see, you might be the Christian that's praising God and the emperor is freaking out because he can't understand why in the world are we burning these people at the stake and they die and I can smell their flesh roasting and they still singing praises to God. Amen. I don't know. I might be calling one of you guys one of these days because I, 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 all I did was uh, uh, read out of the Bible what it says about sexuality. Hello? And somebody wants to come put me in handcuffs. Huh? See, the bigger platform you get, the also the bigger bullseye the devil has on you. I've shared this one time. This bears. This is just good stuff, especially all those hunters. If you look, if you don't like hunting, don't boo me down. Just stay with me. It's a really good point. Okay, but if you walk out, of the, you know the devil's up in his uh, tree stand and he's looking out in the field, and you come running your, you running your little spiked self out in the field, and he's like, nah. So he waits around for. It. Then all of a sudden, here comes a, a four-point buck. He's a little older. He's snorting a little bit. He's like, mm, okay. All righty here. Let's see, line up. And about that time, here come a 10-point buck out. He's like, oh. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Mac Daddy comes out. Ain't nobody seen nothing like that in the woods. And all of a sudden, whoo, right in the crosshairs. What am I trying to say? The Bible talks about horns. It talks about horns in reference. It's an analogy or symbolism for strength and power. And so everybody wants the power, but I'm here to tell you the bigger your horns grow, the more you're putting the crosshairs too. And he'll pass over, he'll pass over a hundred four-pointers to get to your rack. Hello. That was awesome. my apostle said the other day, I'm preaching. <laughs> Glory be to God. Turn to Luke chapter 15. Commitment, 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 commitment. See, I got about another three pages of these notes, but that <laughs> ain't going to happen. <clears throat> so when I come back next time, we uh, will pick this up. Luke chapter 15. I guess I'll start with verses 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Why in the world are you doing venturing into a far country anyway in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brother Bobby said he'd leave in 99 and go after one. Yeah, but you in bad shape when he comes after you in that condition. 
The wolf's got a hold of you. You better stay close to your shepherd. Amen. That's why you mangled and marred and everything. Well, he can heal me. Yeah, he can, but I don't know about you. I don't want to get attacked by a group. Go ahead. If you want to, I have more power to you. I ain't going to get out there in the woods by myself. Went to a far country, and there he wasted, wasted his substance. I found out one of the, one of the core, core things about this ministry is we want to empower people. We want to bring the greatness out of people. And usually your life is not a total wreck where it needs total renovation where we knock it down to the slab. Usually all you got to do is make some adjustments. Amen. You just haven't managed parts of your life right. The devil come along and tell you you're a loser, you ain't no good, you ain't nobody, you won't never be nothing. And the whole time he's scared to death that, that, that if you just fix these little items right here, you'll be all right. Okay. You just need a new window here, a new doorknob there, a new coat of paint in the kitchen, and that's all you need. But he wasted. What does that mean? He didn't manage. He wasn't a good steward of what he was given to him. He wasted his substance with riotous living. I think you guys know about that. So we can go to verse number 14. And when he had spent all. You see, a lot of people these days, they beg, they, 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 they spend everything on what they want and they have to beg for what they need. Well, you know, I mean... That 65-inch TV was $1,300 last week. It's rolled back to 800 bucks. You can't be doing that. You got a car payment coming. Well, you know what? That's, that's just, that's just I, can't, I can't pass that up. We already got a 40-inch TV. Yeah, but this is 65. It's been rolled back. I can't help it. It's been rolled back. <laughs> What you got there, baby? Uh, nothing. I thought it looked like a shoe bag. Well, you know, it was clearance today. <laughs> baby, why'd you... Honey, come on now. You know, I've been talking to you about that pair of shoes for three months. And it just so happened that nobody bought them for three months. And now they own clearance. I know that was God. <laughs> So now all of a sudden you got to call your cable provider and explain to them why you're late on your bill and that goes on your credit rating and your credit rating goes down. Then all of a sudden when you do need to get another vehicle or something like that and they check your credit, oh come on now, and they check it and it's down so you got to pay more of an interest anyways and so you can't do it there so you got to go over here where they're going to hustle you for something, take a big chunk out of it. You might be driving but you're going to be, you're be paying double by the time it's paid for. Because you had to have them shoes. <laughs> Come on, y'all. It's life skills. It's in the Word of God about being good stewards. And he spent all. And there arose a mighty famine in the land. Because that's what's going to happen. And he began to be in want. But I was all right when the check come in, but I got... I got... Uh, I got more month than money. There are going to be famines from time to time. Amen. But as long as you plant yourself by the river of the living water, your Amen. wheat leaf will never wither. You'll always have a green tree. You'll be all right. Where are you planting yourself at? And so he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He had a good thing going, and he, was, and he was committed in this area, and then he dropped the ball and decided to go. Look, if you're a child of the God, it says you're a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Why in the world would you want to go and join yourself to be a citizen of a foreign country? Because they don't love you there. They don't want to give to you. They're going to take from you. That's all they want. They're going to use you and use you, and when you're unusable, they're going to throw you out the door. And that's exactly what happened. 
And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and they sent him into the fields to feed swine. Let me tell you, that is totally horrible. If you go back into Jewish tradition, this was basically the lowest of the low. And what happened is this person mismanaged their life, mismanaged their money, mismanaged everything. They left their home. They left their safety. They got out too far and joined themselves to another citizen. They are, you are, look, if you're God's, you're a king in the kingdom of light. What are you doing fooling around with the kingdom of darkness? You don't have no business out there. And to make it how degrading that is, it's like this. I'm just breaking it down in modern day terms. It's like, it's like girlfriend goes out and she gets buck wild and she goes crazy and she loses everything, and now she don't have a home to go to. Nobody trusts her, <coughs> took her kids and everything else, and now she's living on the street, and now she's getting high to try to self-medicate herself and everything, and all of a sudden the lowest of the lower happen, and then all of a sudden Bubba Ray pull up. <laughs> and Bubba Ray say, look, all nasty out here in the streets. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ain't nobody. You ain't nothing. Look, I'm going to do you a favor. You be my hoe. You work it for me. You bring me back my money. I'll take you out of the streets. But you better bring me my money, and you better work it every night. But I'll make sure you get some food. I'll get you some shoes. Yeah, I'll get you all that, but you better bring me my money. See, that's what it was like going in and feeding the hogs back then. So degrading. Come on. So degrading that you got to that point where you would sell yourself to that point just to eat the pig's slop. Come on. And things didn't change, and I've got to drop it with this. My time is running out. Things change on the outside only when there's change on the inside. Because you see, he was out there and he had pig slop all over his clothes. He had uh, dirty, nasty clothes and they were ripped up and they, there was pigs running around everywhere and, and there was flies all around his head and some gnats hanging on and, and dirt all over his face. But the transition come, transition did not come when there was no more gnats. <coughs> the transition did not come when he finally got some new clothes. Oh, come on, hear me, somebody. The transition didn't happen when the pig slop got off of, the, off of his garments. The transition happened when he came to himself and he had a brand new thought and his life changed forevermore when he said, Ah, there's so much more in my father's house. What in the world am I doing out here in this foreign country? Being a citizen, doing something when my daddy has enough food to eat. He has nice new clothes and a safe place to be. He loves me. My daddy loves me. He loves me. What am I doing out here? And the change happened when he was committed to that change. Because he was not a cop out, a hold out, a drop out. He said, I'm going all out. And his daddy met him the only time in Scripture. Give me two more minutes. This is the only time in Scripture where I found out that God ran. God ran back to him. I said he ran back to him. And brought him in as if nothing ever happened. But here's your part to play. You have to change your mind. I don't hear this preached very much, but I'm going to go ahead and do it tonight. Come on. The father ran to him, but the father only ran to him when he got into his turf. Yeah. He, he only ran to him when he come back into his dominion. See, you got to get out of that place where you you got to leave where you're at. I, I, I'm not even talking about maybe geographically. I'm talking about your mind. You got to leave where you're at in your mind. You got to change something. You got to leave where you're at and you got to come back and be committed to it and be all out. But when you finally do that, you can make a transition. And when you get back into daddy's turf, he'll take care of everything. Because I'm telling you, there ain't no ghost goblins or goobers or anything else going to come up in the father's house to try to get a hold of you again. They can't touch you in the father's house. There's provision in the father's house. There's safety in the father's house. 
There's righteousness in the Father's house. There's a position for you. There's a place of honor for you in the Father's house. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 